Welcome inside the Citrus TV studios for a special webisode edition of Talking Points. I'm Jack Watson. After months of steady stock market gains in 2017 and early 2018, this past week the market endured significant losses, then more gains, then more losses. After declining 8% in the past week or so, the market rallied this week, but the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed down 4% yesterday. So to say the least, the market has fluctuated and both sides of the political spectrum are reacting. Some are saying the recent behavior can be chalked to a quote, market correction to the recent record breaking gains. And others are pointing to other measurements of America's economic success as evidence of Trump's successful policies. To break down whether that statement is true and what we might expect in the near future, we have with us our Talking Points analyst, Michael Fernari. This week has been a volatile one for the stock market and has marked the first major correction after a few years of upward progress. The Dow fell nearly 666 points last Friday and then fell nearly 1,200 points this Monday. The Dow bounced back on Tuesday and Wednesday to the tune of about 500 points, only to plunge another 1,000 points on Thursday. Despite the turmoil, most investors are not panicking, instead signaling that this simply amounts to a correction after more than a year of climbing growth. Last Friday, the Department of Labor announced wages rose higher than anticipated for the month of January. This report, combined with news that interest rates will continue to rise going forward, sparked concerns over inflation. This concern may have led to last Friday's sell-off and the plunges that followed. Since the 2008 financial crash, the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates very low in an attempt to jumpstart the economy by allowing people to more easily buy houses and start businesses with loans. As the economy has recovered, with stock prices and wages rising dramatically, the Federal Reserve has signaled that it will begin to phase out these post-crash policies in an effort to avoid inflation. Inflation is the word that scares investors, and it makes sense that this shift would lead to a market correction. Investors, and even President Trump, will be hoping that this is only a correction and not an omen of economic downturn. Our Talking Points analyst Michael Fernari, and joining us at the desk right now is Talking Points analyst Thomas St. Hilaire. Now, Michael, I'm going to open this first question to you. Why the sporadic stock market behavior? Well, Jack, the behavior of the market has been sporadic because the market is by its nature sporadic because it's speculative. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty right now in the economic markets because we not only is chair chairwoman of the Federal Reserve Janet Yellen departing and, and Jerome Powell will be taking over, but also there seems to be a signal that the, that the times of low interest rates are going to be coming to an end. And this uncertainty has led to a little bit of uncertainty in the market as well. And another thing to add to that about, about what you just said about the markets being very speculative, uh, can be very sporadic. And one of the main drivers of that, I mean, we actually saw this back in 2014. We've seen these fluctuations before. And a lot of this because the market's driven sometimes not by a specific event, but sometimes by psychology. That's why the stock market really on its face value isn't the only economic measure to take into consideration. So how have both political parties reacted, the Republicans and the Democrats? Well, naturally, uh, when the stock market's doing well, people want to take credit for it. And when it's not doing well, people want to cast blame uh, on someone else. We saw when the stock market was doing extremely well, Trump was going out taking a lot of credit for it. And now as the stock market has, uh, you know, over the last week suffered some serious losses, people have been very quick to point to President Trump. And the reality is, is that the stock market fluctuating, this is something that happens all the time and is not the only indicator of economic growth in the United States. You have wage growth, uh, you have employment. You know, an example that, that I always give with this is, let's say you're looking at a baseball player, right? If they hit 20 home runs, that isn't enough to tell you how good of a baseball player they are. How often do they you know, get on base? How good is their fielding? Just looking at one measure on its face value is not enough. You have to look at the whole picture. Now, you mentioned uh, the, fact that the, the, the fact that other measures of economic success, success they're, happen they're happening under a Republican administration. What does, Michael, what does that mean uh, for the midterm elections in 2018? Yeah, I think the Democrats are going to be watching this one very carefully. Now, the Democrats, in their response to President Trump so far, have tried to make it very much a cultural conflict and tried to make it about kind of the resistance and about a cultural movement. Now, the problem is, once people get to the ballot boxes, if they've seen that the last year has been very good for their wallets and very good for their investments, they may be much more hesitant to vote against Trump on those more nebulous grounds. So I think the Democrats are going to be hoping, not necessarily hoping that the country does poorly, but I think it is probably better for their campaign and for their case to the country if the economic situation of the country is not quite so bright. Another, oh, I'm sorry, just another quick thing that's important to note. When you look at like the state of the United States economy or the stock market may be, 
people tend to associate the president with how things are going. Um, so people were saying, was it a mistake for Trump to take credit when the stock market was doing well? Well, the reality is, is that doesn't always matter because if the economy is doing really well, people will give the president credit. And if it's not doing so well, you know that people aren't, gonna, aren't always going to give credit. Now, according to the Chicago Tribune, fewer than 14% of all Americans even own a stock directly. So does this really even matter to the average American? Well, to the average, that depends. I mean, it depends also on what kinds of stocks you are investing in. Obviously, even if you aren't investing in stocks, this is something to pay attention to, because like I said, when you look at it in relation to other economic indicators, it's really important. But you know, if you're a long-term investor, which is what a lot of people do when they go into the stock market, there's really not much to worry about. If you're 25 years old, this is actually a great time to invest. You really don't want the stock market shooting up really high because the, the whole point of investing in stocks is buying low and selling high. Um, so it would be a mistake unless you need the money, say right now, um, you really don't have much to worry about. Now we mentioned those other factors for economic measurement. Michael, uh, how do you see the Trump presidency's policies affecting those factors? Yeah, Donald Trump's policies so far have been very much about creating a pro-business environment, whether that's cutting down on regulations or cutting down on taxes, particularly corporate taxes. Now these, these measures affect the fundamentals of the economy far more than, say, the stock market. And I think that that we're going to look at as a very important factor when we talk about wi rising wages, median household income. You know, as we've seen in the aftermath of the tax plan, we've seen a lot of wage increases. Michael Fernari, Thomas St. Hilaire, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you very much. Time.